Our next presentation is by Hank Chen, an international student from the Nanshan district of Shenzhen, China. Hank joined SSFS as a second semester eighth grader in 2016. In the fall, Hank plans a move to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where he will further his studies at Carnegie Mellon University, pursuing interests in computer science, physics, and fine art. For his fun fact, Hank shared with a bit of a twinkle in his eye, my main operating system is neither Windows nor Mac OS. Instead, it is a Linux Ubuntu with a bootable Windows 10 installed in a USB drive. While Hank was presenting this evening all the way from China added, this presentation is inspired by Bengali.ai and Kaggle data science platform, mentored by SSFS alum from the class of 2014 and Carnegie Mellon graduate in machine learning, Naveen Shankar, and sponsored by the Sandy Spring Friends School Senior Project. Lauren, for this next presentation, would you please stop screen sharing at this time? Hank, please feel free to share your presentation at this time. The stage is yours, friend. Thank you, Eduardo. Good evening, friends. This is Hank number one presenting the Bengali AI Graphing Handwriting Classification Project. It's a project to use AI algorithms to digitalize written materials for language Bunga. I'll let our animator Hank number two to present this in detail. And during the process, please feel free to type your questions in the chat box if you have any. So, uh, sorry. Thank you, Hank. Bengali is now the most spoken language in the world. However, the complexity of its handwritten characters make it hard for computers to recognize. Well, Bengali has only 11 vowels and 38 consonants. Its alphabet has 18 diacritics or accents, which means there are approximately 10,000 graphemes in the written language, 52 times that of English. Okay, that sounds interesting. So you're gonna code every possible way of writing those characters into a computer for it to recognize handwriting, right? Problem solved. Oh yeah, so I browsed online and found a bunch of images of Bengali handwritings and began the process and... Wait, what? Sure, you can do that, it just will... will take longer than deep thoughts calculation of the answer to the ultimate question of life. But... How do I turn this data into a digitalization tool? Artificial neural networks have been proved to have such power to translate images into meaningful data. If all we need to do is to find the relationship between a bunch of images and correct graphemy. In another word, we want to find a function that takes images as input and give correct label as output. So, we first translate pictures to a computer interpretable numerical matrix of grayscale pixel values. We then model our neural network as a function f of x that has a series of additions and multiplication chains. Our hope is, given correct constants, in this case a, b, and c, we can think of them as adders and multipliers that configure the neural network. This magic function will take input as we dump in to produce the correct output. And so you may ask, but, but how do we find these adders and multipliers? The answer is what we learned in our second grade math, calculus. Let's think this function f of x as a black box doing complex computations that we as human could not understand what it's doing. Or you can interpret that as your dog who always runs around the room and destroys everything. We first randomly initiate the gigantic polynomial function f of x. In another word, we randomly wire the dog's brain so it does things randomly, including destroying your room. We want the dog to behave, or maybe teach it how to do math. How? Well, if it is a dog, we give a reward whenever the dog does the right thing. If it's a neural network, we give it a punishment. When we pass our image into the function, the punishment can be defined as the difference between the function output and the output we 
our desire. You can interpret that as the difference between our desired behavior and the dog's actual behavior, or how wrong the dog's behavior is, and which direction can it improve. If the dog does anything different than we think it should do, we punish the dog and tell the dog correct direction to improve. As simple as that. In mathematics, we represent this arrow term as a vector matrix with a direction that can be propagated using calculus chain rule to tell us which direction should the network adjust its constants. You can think of this process as a step-by-step -step function optimization of the neural network's configuration. It's the same idea as finding the global minimum using Euler's method. The x-axis is the dog's behavior and the y-axis is the punishment. Our goal is to find the dog's behavior that reduces the punishment, therefore increases the accuracy. So in theory, if we train the dog enough times, the dog can learn any behavior we want, right? Similar to reinforcement in operant conditioning of psychology, we give the dog many practice problems to do. It can learn how to speak Bengali just by trial and error. Of course, that takes a lot of trial and error, but the computer's simulated environment is good at that repetition. But in application, things can get a little bit messy because we have to recreate the dog's learning behavior, such as defining how fast he should learn and at which simula should he pay attention to. These are embedded in dog's genetic code. Without them, computers can't learn. For example, we call the function optimization. We might not reduce the punishment to zero because we might get stuck in the local minimum. Many papers were published to solve this problem, and without those tricks in the paper, we can never get a neural network to work as I described above. But let's not worry about that. I'm sure you would rather spend a year instead of me talking to you in 10 minutes learning those. For handwritten digits, that's easy, and the performance of computers surpassed the human ability years ago. But we, when it comes to Bengali graphomane, there are some problems. I'll just uh, list a few important ones here. Bengali dataset is super large, meaning harder to learn. And due to the nature of the language, Bengali has three categories instead of traditional one category. And not all combinations of labels are presented in the data set, which means that the network should generalize unseen data. There are also strange linguistic phenomena that a single character can have vastly different ways of writing, that is, not one-to-one -one mapping. And lastly, the data set is not clean itself. It requires our manual cleaning. And so, in the end, I implemented an ensemble of several twisted double-headed models. DanceNet, SE, ResNext, GoldNet, EfficientNet, E3, with various learning schedules, batch size, augmentations with five-fold cross-validation, each trained for four days and fine-trimmed on K80 GPU, the highest accuracy I got is 97.35 on the test data set. So, sorry to interrupt, but can you tell me more about the process of developing this the process? Well, sitting in the front of my laptop whenever I have time, reading either papers or thread online, or watch my code running on Google Cloud Platform. Quite boring. When I first see a computer when I was six, I saw that it must be some kind of magic. But I soon find out this all came from earthly human research. Thank you for your time and attention this evening. And special thank you to Sandy Spring Friends School and Senior Project Committee. In addition, I'll put a special thank to uh, Navian, who participated as my uh, project advisor, also in the panelist. Thank you.